again, Barry here, back with another episode of our Street by Street History of South Hobart. Today we take a walk through Darcy Street. Now, Darcy Street was another one of the streets created when uh, Robert Lathrop Murray uh, subdivided his large estate in South Hobart in the late 1830s. Uh, and the street was actually originally called Liberty Place, which complemented uh, the Washington and Congress streets that we discussed last week uh, and commemorates the War of Independence over in America. But Liberty Place was eventually renamed Darcy Street um, not long after um, to... Uh, and it was named after uh, Darcy Wentworth, who... Uh, Murray worked for when he was in Sydney. Now, Darcy Street used to be the western boundary of the Hobart City Council uh, from about 1857 all the way through to 1907, which is when the Wellington Town Board was absorbed. Uh, and there's still a boundary stone on Macquarie Street that shows this. Now, before we go much further, it would be remiss of me to leave out that we've just passed quite a significant landmark in Darcy Street, and that's number 10 here, uh, which was the home of Errol Flynn, uh, who's a famous actor, when he was young. Uh, his dad, uh, Theodore Flynn, was a lecturer at the local university, uh, and this is where he lived when he was quite young. Now, on to a little bit more of the history around Robert Lathrop Murray, who we've discussed a couple of times as we go through here. Quite a significant uh, person in South Hobart's history. But Murray completed uh, a university, completed a degree at university before he joined the army in 1795. Um, he was born and raised in England, uh, born in 19, sorry, in 1777 and he served during the Napoleonic Wars. However, in 1815, he was convicted of a crime, sentenced and transported to Australia for seven years. Now, he was granted a pardon not long after he arrived in Sydney, and he actually worked for the police um, uh, for a gentleman named Darcy Wentworth, which we mentioned earlier. Now, he moved to Hobart about six years later and managed to acquire several large uh, properties and estates that went all the way from South Hobart into Sandy Bay. Now, he was quite, uh, quite interested in writing and he actually, uh, under the, the pen name A Colonist, uh, contributed to two series of letters uh, to the Hobart Gazette in and around 1824 to 1825 which strongly, strongly criticised uh, Lieutenant Governor George Arthur's administration. Now, as it turns out, Arthur was quite sensitive to criticism uh, and he took uh, legal action against uh, Andrew Bent, which was the newspaper owner back then, who was, as a consequence, fined and imprisoned. Um, Arthur also passed legislation that gave him the power to revoke newspaper licences after this one. Now, back then, what was called Van Diemen's Land did not have any parliamentary institutions. Uh, and so the press was the only forum for public discussion on anything, really. Um, Murray became the editor of the Colonial Times in August of 1825 uh, and continued having a good old crack at Arthur and his establishment. Uh, and ended up being a bit of a fight for, uh, for freedom of the press. But a, a great achievement, Murray was ultimately uh, successful and he was that the right to revoke newspaper licences was annulled by the British government uh, later on. Murray worked as the editor uh, right up until 1845 and a couple of years later, he returned to Britain and unfortunately died in 1850. So that's it guys for another episode of our Street by Street History of South Hobart. Having an amazing amount of fun 
learning a few things along the way and uh, giving you guys a bit of history about our beautiful area. Uh, if you want to know or have any information about some specific streets within our suburb, please continue to flick through and uh, we'll get to it in due time. Until then, take care and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.